Hello everyone, welcome back to chapter 3. Uh, today we're going to go over the brain. So before we talked about what are neurons, how do those work, we talked about uh, how you can split up the nervous system into the peripheral and central nervous system, and specifically how the central nervous system is split up into the spinal cord and the brain. Um, now, the brain itself is made up of multiple different parts, uh, and each part uh, kind of plays a different role in forming, uh, forming the human experience. So the first thing you need to know when talking about the brain is how to orient yourself. So we're going to be seeing some pictures of the brain, and they're going to be at different areas um, or different angles of the brain. So there are a few different ways that we talk about that. Um, so the first way we talk about it is in terms of horizontal, coronal, or sagittal planes. Um, and so this is just where are we looking from. So with the horizontal plane, what you can think of is that's like if you're standing directly on top of something and looking straight down. That would be a horizontal plane. So kind of like if you're trying to take the perfect Instagram photo of your food at a restaurant, you want to go from straight above it. Um, so that would be horizontal plane. You can also think of that as if you were to cut uh, your brain uh, per par parallel from the floor. Um, so you pretty much be cutting it from your nose through your ears uh, straight to the back. So it's just a straight cut parallel to the floor. So that's a horizontal plane. And so horizontal plane, you can go from down to up, you'll get multiple different cuts. Um, but that's what horizontal is. Now this next one we're going to talk about is a coronal plane. Now this is like if you're looking at something straight on from the front. Um, so if you were to look at someone straight on uh, from like eye to eye, and if you were able to see into their brain, then what you'd be seeing is uh, this coronal view. So again, if you're thinking about it as if you were to cut something, it'd be kind of like cutting it from ear to ear, um, just all the way around. So if the ears are here, you're cutting this from this ear straight to the other ear. So this would be uh, perpendicular to the floor. Um, but again, it goes from the front to the back. The final one we're going to talk about is the sagittal plane. Now, the sagittal plane um, is similar to the coronal plane, where you're, uh, it's perpendicular to the floor, but this one's going pretty much from left to right. Um, so whereas the coronal plane goes from front to back, the sagittal plane goes from left to right. Um, <clears throat> so this would be like you take a slice out of, let me, let me draw. So if this is your head, and we have your eyes here, if you're taking sagittal cuts, you'd be cutting like this. Okay, so these are sagittal cuts. Um, and remember, horizontal would be like this. So you can take different cuts horizontally. Uh, the coronal plane um, is cutting it like this along the side. So you can't really do that here. Um, but So that's how we look at the brain. Um, you also want to know these words anterior and posterior. So anterior means front, so closer to the eyes, and posterior means uh, the back. So, you know, sometimes when people are talking about butts, they call them posterior. Um, and that really just means closer to the butt. Um, so you can have a coronal plane anterior or a po coronal plane posterior, so closer to the back. We also have dorsal and ventral. So dorsal means top, while ventral means bottom. Um, <clears throat> so that's how, we're how we talk about the brain. And you uh, will want to know about this going forward in the test, and as well as other parts of the class. I'm going to refer to anterior, posterior, talk about what uh, plane we're looking at, 
So you'll want to familiarize yourself with this. So moving on to the brain itself, uh, we can split it into three major groups. We have got the forebrain, the midbrain, and the hindbrain. So we're going to talk about these in three different sections. Uh, but here's just a nice sagittal view. So remember, this is from the side. So this is a sagittal view of the brain. Um, and you can see the forebrain is this big section that we usually think of with the brain. Uh, the midbrain is this little section tucked into the very middle of the, uh, of the brain itself, under the forebrain. And then we've got the hindbrain. So that's really all this bottom stuff as well as this area back here. And don't worry, we're going to talk about all this, um, but you can kind of see how forebrain's on top, midbrain's in the middle, and hindbrain is on the bottom. So the forebrain itself is very highly developed. The midbrain is used more for reflexes, uh, so it's a little less developed and something that we see more in, uh, in some less developed animals. And then the hindbrain is also something in uh, less developed animals, um, but that is important in vital functions and coordinating movement. So the forebrain itself, we also sometimes call the cerebrum. So this is split into different sections. We've got the cerebral cortex, so that's all of this fun kind of noodly looking things. Uh, we've got the basal ganglia, so that's these blue things here. Um, we've got the limbic system. We've got the thalamus and the hypothalamus. <clears throat> now it's important to remember that the brain, when we talk about it, we also talk about it um, in terms of two different hemispheres. So we've got the left side and the right side. So we'll call that the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere. And so everything here, um, you have two. So there'll be a second one on the other hemisphere. Now the cerebral cortex itself can be split down even more into four different lobes. So we have the frontal lobe here. We've got the parietal lobe, the occipital lobe, and then the temporal lobe. So here I have it colored in uh, different colors so you can see where they are kind of separated. Um, they're mostly separated by uh, function, by what they do, but they're also separated by these deep grooves called fissures. Um, so these are really nice big folds or fissures um, that kind of help separate the brain based on function. Um, and so you can see how there's some nice uh, ones there. Some places it's not as clear, um, but in general uh, you separate them via these fissures. So the uh, forebrain um, is made up of that cerebral cortex with those four lobes, and that's the outermost la layer of the uh, cerebral hemispheres. So again, that's left and right. And this is involved in thinking and mental processes. Um, so when we think about like higher order um, thinking or higher order uh, brain development, then what we're really talking about is this cerebral cortex. <clears throat> um, and then we've got the basal ganglia. So these are just a collection of neurons uh, that are really crucial to motor function. So with the basal ganglia, I want you to think of motor function. And with the cerebral cortex, uh, I want you to think about thinking, mental processes, uh, some personality stuff. The next section in the forebrain is the limbic system. So the limbic system is uh, made up of these three different brain areas. The first one is the hippocampus which uh, its main function is memory. Uh, so, for instance, if I was making a glossary term for hippocampus, I might say uh, the hippo, for hippocampus, I might say like uh, hip, the hippos on campus to study psychology. 
something like that, you know? So we've got hippo, we've got campus in, so you can kind of connect how hippo and campus, and then we're studying psychology. So you need your hippocampus in order to study psychology so you can remember it. Um, or the hippos on campus to ace the test, that kind of thing, okay? So that's how I like to think of hippocampus. As I split it into hippo, hippos on campus, and there you improve your memory. Um, the amygdala is the next one, and that's key in emotional responses. Um, the way I remember it is I split it into Amy, and then I kind of mix up the letters and say Amy Glada. Um, you know, so Amy's glad, um, and that's an emotional response. So that's how I remember the amygdala. We've got the nucleus accumbens. Um, and this is the reward center, um, so this would be a great one for you guys to maybe come up with a fun glossary term on, or really any of these. All these brain areas are perfect for making those glossary terms. Um, <clears throat> the next section of the forebrain, we've got the thalamus. So the thalamus is kind of like the relay system in the brain. So it's relays that incoming sensory information, remember from those sensory neurons in the peripheral nervous system, uh, through to groups of neurons that project to the appropriate region in the cortex. So it takes that incoming information uh, and then decides kind of which of those uh, lobes the information needs to go to in order to be processed. Next we've got the hypothalamus. Um, and so the hypothalamus, uh, so hypo, hypo means less or little, um, and so it's actually d uh, found directly under the thalamus, um, and it's much smaller, so you've got a small hypo hypothalamus directly under the big thalamus, so it kind of makes sense. Um, and the hypothalamus helps to regulate basic biological drives. Um, so this could be uh, hormone functions, um, regulate uh, sexual development, regulate metabolism, behavior, stress, all of that fun stuff. So that's it for the forebrain. Um, in the next video, I'm going to cover the midbrain and hindbrain, and then how we kind of can take all of this together.